In this video, I'm going to explain what is DocuSign CLM and how can you use it to better manage your contract within your organization. Let's get into it. We're going to use the example of this master services agreement so that you can better understand the actual workflow that CLM can help you streamline. But first, let's take a step back and understand what is contract lifecycle management, which is what DocuSign CLM stands for. So every contract has a life cycle. You first need to create it. Then it might need to go through some internal approval. Another party might want to negotiate. And then the contract needs to be approved either by your internal stakeholders or external parties, signed and then fulfilled. And then the contracts will need to be renewed at some point or you need to do something about them. If we use the example of this MSA, typically the service provider will create the MSA in something like Microsoft Word and then send it for internal approval. Legal will take a look at the document and then maybe some changes need to be made. But if we assume that the contract looks great, then Legal will send a document for signature to the client. If the client wants to negotiate, some of the terms, then they will probably redline the document. The sales rep and legal will have to talk to each other to make sure that they can actually agree on what the client wants. And then this is when the back and forth really starts and waste a ton of time because there's scattered communication across different channels, whether it's email or within the actual Word document as comments. There are also different versions of the same document. You never know which one is the most up to date and it's just a nightmare. It will go through several rounds of changes until it can actually be signed. So the time to contracting is very lengthy depending on how much negotiations needs to actually happen on this document. And so that's exactly what DocuSign CLM can help with because the creation, the negotiation, the actual approval and review and collaboration between all those different parties happen in the same platform. Let's take a look at how we can automate all of this workflow using DocuSign CLM for this particular use case, the master services agreement. So within the platform, we have this button that says create client MSA. So we'll click on that button. And so using this form, the sales rep can enter all of the information that's going to feed inside of our master services agreement. I've just filled in the form with some dummy information and I'm going to choose the state as Alabama and then click on next. Now the document has been generated and I chose Alabama as being the governing law because this is where the client is based. So there's nothing special about Alabama. However, if I go back in here and then choose Nevada, I've got this additional clause that gets added to the document automatically. And so this is really good because it means that the sales rep or whoever is creating the document doesn't have to remember to add a specific clause. So that really eliminates back and forth already just around creation of the document. Now the sales rep in this example has filled in all of the information manually, but if CLM was integrated with a database or a CRM such as Salesforce, then all of this information can be pulled in automatically and generate the documents in just one click. And so if you want to see how this works, I recommend you watch my video on DocuSign CLM with Salesforce, and that can work with any other platform. It doesn't have to be Salesforce, by the way, but that can really automate the workflow even further. Now, in this example, I'm still acting as the actual sales rep. We're now at the step where we send a document for internal approval. So if I switch back here, I'm just going to click on send for internal approval. And if I wanted to leave a note for legal, then I could just say, please check that XYZ is okay. And then we're going to click on complete. This is going to create a task and send a notification for legal to review the document and approve it. Here's the email notification that legal would get as soon as the sales rep sent the document for internal approval. Legal can either click on access your task from here, and then they will see that they have this task to complete, or they can also go to their tasks and then they will see all the tasks that they have to complete. 
I'll go to the dashboard and the dashboard helps track the status of each document. So where is each document in the life cycle? And so that's really handy because you don't need to rely on email notifications and you always know where the document is in the actual document journey. But let's go back here and we're now acting as legal. So we, we've just received the MSA and we need to decide whether we want to approve it or whether we want to make some changes. We can see the comments that the sales rep has left for us. And here we can just approve the document or reject it. And we can also leave a comment. Let's just pretend in this case that the document is approved and it's ready to be sent to the clients. And if we haven't met before, hi, my name is Sofian Saudi. I used to be a DocuSign consultant working for DocuSign directly. And since 2019, I've founded Solicit Consulting, an agency that specializes in streamlining organization contract workflows. If your organization has to create lots of contracts, then there's a huge opportunity for you to save tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees by automating things like contract generation using data that you may have from a CRM, tracking where the document is in the life cycle, sending the document automatically for signature, and then also the negotiation part, all the redlining and the review between different stakeholders. When the documents are signed, you may want them to be stored automatically in a folder and extract information from those documents so that you can always be on top of things, which means you always know in advance when are your next contract going to expire in the next three months or which obligations you have to fulfill. And all of this can be done completely automatically if you know how to set things up. And for this, you will need to learn how to map out your process, then learn how DocuSign or other contract life management or so CLM tools work, build your workflows and your templates and integrate those workflows and templates with the apps that your team uses every day. And you can absolutely do this on your own, but if you don't have the time or capacity or the resources to become CLM implementation experts like we have for the last six years, then you can schedule a call with our team using the link just down below. During the call, we'll review your current contract lifecycle process and suggest the best implementation roadmap for your unique workflow. But let's go back here and we're now acting as legal. So legal is just approved the document, which means that now the document is being sent for signature to the client. And if you're wondering how all of this happens in the background, here's what the workflow looks like inside of DocuSign CLM. And so this first part of the workflow is about creating the document and all the metadata. I'm going to get into what metadata is because it's really helpful. This group of tasks is all about getting legal to approve the document. And then we have the document being routed to the customer and all the sort of back and forth and loop that happens in, in, in Docs and CLM. But so now the document has been sent to the client. And so we're going to open a document and let's just pretend that I want to change something. So I'm simply going to decline to sign and say that I want to make a few changes. And so acting as the client, we now want to negotiate, which is the next phase of the contract life cycle. And so we just got a notification acting as a sales rep that the signature was rejected by the client and the sales rep will receive that feedback and then decide what the next steps are. So we're going to send the contract for negotiation. Obviously this is the most complex route because this is really where the value of CLM is. If we open our task, we can see that the client said that they want to make a few changes, but we're not exactly sure what the actual changes are. And so here we're just going to send a document for negotiation and say, please red line. And so this is going to send a word version of that document directly to the client. Here's what the email notification looks like, and this is fully customizable, but essentially we can download the contracts. So we're now looking at the document from the client's perspective to make changes to the terms that we want to change. We don't want payment fees. We don't want a three-year contract. We want a one-year contract. We also want to be able to pay within 60 days of receiving the invoice. And we also want to add a force majeure clause. I'm going to save this document. As you can see, I have not turned on track changes. I'm just saving it as a new version 
So we're now going to email back that document simply by replying here. Here's a document we've just updated. And remember, this is where this sits in the workflow. So we've just negotiated the term and now we just email the document back, which should create a new task for the sales rep. We're just going to see exactly what they've requested to see whether that's acceptable for us. And so we can see here instantly that they've just removed the late payment terms. They want to change this from three to one year. They've added a new clause for force majeure, and they've also changed the payment terms from 14 to 16 days. What we can do at this time is send the document for internal review so that legal can run a playbook. And so a playbook is essentially a set of rules that the company has defined and that each contract needs to fit within. So we're going to click on run all and the AI has found that two clauses at least or two bits of information in the contract are not in accordance with the playbook. So if we click on details here, we can see that the one year change that the client has requested doesn't actually work for us because the playbook says it should be at least two years. So we've asked for three initially, then the client asked for one. So we're going to apply the suggestion and say that it's going to be two to keep the negotiation going. So I'm just going to click on apply suggestion. Now, in terms of the payment terms, if I look at this, it says that the client wants 60 days and it's fine. So we're going to leave that as is. And I'm also going to click on resolve here. The next item that needs our attention is about the late payment fees. And so the client got rid of the late payment clause. That's we can't see it on the contract right here. However, in our playbook, the contract needs to include a late payment clause. So what we're going to do is to insert that back out of our contract. And now, as you can see, the late payment terms were just added to the document without me having to type it. But what we're going to do is we're just going to change it to 2% so that the client feels like we're willing to work with them. We're going to click on save to CLM. And the great thing is that I don't need to upload the document back to DocuSign. It just goes back directly in there. So still acting as legal, we've now uploaded a document back inside of DocuSign CLM. We can either send it back for signature directly to the cu customer, or we can just send it back as a Word document to make sure they approve the new terms before we send it for signature. So what we're going to do is just send it for review, which means they're going to get another email with the Word document, and then they can just look at it and tell us whether the terms that we've updated in the document are acceptable for them. So we're now acting as the customer. We can see that the payment terms have changed to 60 days, which is what we wanted. The late payment fees, they haven't been deleted. Um, they're now changed from five to three, which is okay terms we've requested three years it's two let's just say that we're happy with that and the force majeure clause is here and let's just say that we're happy with that clause so we're going to save the document and simply go back to the email and reply with the latest version of our document this is going to trigger a new task for the sales rep to take a look at and then send for final approval now the Sales rep just got the document back. And since nothing's changed, we can just send it for signature. So here is where we are. The client is receiving the document for signature. And then simply approving the document. So I'm now countersigning the agreement. Now that the client has signed, I'm countersigning the agreement as the sales rep. And I'm now clicking on finish. Now that the document has been signed by both parties or so the client and legal or our sales rep, the document is stored automatically in DocuSign CLM in the client's folder and it's sealed in electronically. And if we open that document, what's really interesting, one of the key differentiators between using DocuSign CLM as a repository for your documents versus Dropbox or SharePoint or things like this is that DocuSign is able to extract key data points from the document so that you can reuse them in your reporting to extract information that is typically just trapped inside of the document so that you can meet your obligations and understand what contract is active, inactive, and other key elements that are part of the contract. 
So if we go here in the attributes, CLM was able to extract the final term that we negotiated with the client. Remember, we started with three years, the client asked for one, and then we've asked for two, the client proved this, and then this gets updated in the contract. We also have the effective date and the status of the document which is signed and whether the MSA is active or inactive, which means that if you imagine doing, I don't know, 20 a week or even five a week, What's really interesting is that if we go to the dashboard tab here, we get an overview of where all the contracts are in their life cycle. And so in our example, we've used the MSA so we can see where each MSA is in the process, MSAs that are due to expire, but that would also apply to any SOWs. Any contract really, whether you have to fulfill an obligation or whether it's a third party that has an obligation with you, you can track that very easily. Those reports that are fully customizable. You can filter by a contract type, by expiry date. So we can see here those three MSAs are due to expire in three months. And we can see all the other documents that are in flight. So the ones that have not been fully executed just yet. Now, the way that I've created this contract today was completely manually, but you don't have to do that manually. We could generate the MSA in just one click, as opposed to having to enter all of the data manually and risk to make mistakes when generating the contract. If you want to see how you can fully automate the generation of the contract, I would recommend you watch my video on how to use DocuSign CLM with Salesforce to see how you can fully automate the document lifecycle. And even if you're not using Salesforce, it will just give you an idea of how the workflow actually works when you don't have to key things in manually and all the data is just flowing automatically from your systems. And this is how you can use DocuSign CLM to streamline your contracting process. If you have any questions or if you need any help with implementing this solution, you can use the link just down below to schedule a call with our implementation consultants. During the call, we will analyze your current contracting lifecycle process and suggest the best implementation roadmap, whether it's the tools or integrations for your company's unique needs. I will see you in the next video. And until then, happy signing. Ciao.